Fold structures on geological maps can appear complicated and difficult to interpret at first sight. So let's develop a strategy for analysing the folds on this map. This is a hypothetical map, but it still shows some classic outcrop patterns that you see on real geological maps. For example, these strange wing-like or boomerang shapes. And these arise because of the intersection of folds with topography. So some of this structure represents fold closures and other parts represent simple V-ing into valley shapes. The first thing to do is to work out what parts of the structure are folds and which parts are topographic effects. So it's always worth looking at the topographic information on a map that underlies the geology. And I can see that we've got some high values here, what's that, 800 metres, and the general trend of the contours is running like this, and they're getting lower and then higher. So we've got a valley that's running down through here, and a ridge line here, and a ridge line there. So what I'm going to do is imagine looking at this hillside. So let's just take that valley away, and we'll cover up bits of the map so we just see this hillside. So we can't see this far side of the hill. And we can't see the hill side on this side of the valley. So we're simply looking at this hillside, which is a natural, though distorted, cross-section through the geology. So let's just sketch a cross-section. So here's the ridge line coming down, eventually dropping off, and the valley gradually climbing up through here. So that's imagining we're sitting here looking across the valley and we see the ridge top and the valley bottom. So let's draw the geology on and I can see the top of the ridge here has got this bit of green and this orange horizon's coming around. Something like that. And the green's coming down off the ridge, goes into the valley bottom and comes up the other side like that. Let's get the ridge a bit further. I can see now in this position that this darker blue doesn't quite get up to the paper, so quite up to the ridge line. So this comes through something like that and then comes back down again. And similarly this orange goes up and down like this. And finally as we come over here we get the dark blue again, which comes all the way up to the ridge line. And then the orange like that. So there's a sort of a bit of cross section through this, the dark blue coming around, the orange coming in like this, and we can just, there's our basic cross section. Just colour it in, shall we? So now let's continue our cross section, showing what's above ground and what's below ground. And let's rotate this so that it's set up to be a cross section like this. And I'll just obscure the map for now. Okay, well, pretty clearly then, this piece in here is going to come around like that. Let's take that over, something like this. And this piece is going to do, do that. So that piece can come around like that. So this then is going to come over and out like that. And we can extrapolate this further to suggest this is going to come round and go through something like that. And maybe the base of the orange, finally, we can take this round here, underneath everything. Perhaps something like this. So that would be our cross section, we'll orient it. Uh, this would be over on this side of the map, so that would be northwest. That would be southeast. So we've got a sketch cross section now that's through the map. Well, next up, let's try and pick some of these 
uh, fold structures out. And I want to try and trace out the hinge line that is where this orange unit, which is the top of unit A, closes around this antiform. It's there on the cross section and it's there on the map. Right, so where else is it? And this hinge line will be going through like this. So if I sort of prop this up, it's going through the fold structure like this as we take this limb around. So that's where the hinge line goes. In other words, it's going into the subsurface through here. So let's look at the map in a bit more detail. And we can see that on this side of the valley, well, essentially, this valley side over here is a mirror image of the side that we've sketched. So this hinge line is, appears over here. So our hinge line itself is a line that comes through like this. Strung across the valley, going into the subsurface here. And it's going to appear again over here. Oops, out like that. So that's our hinge line for the antiformal closure of unit A, or the top of unit A, the boundary between A and B, A and B. So that's the trend of a hinge line. We can also do the same again by picking this hinge line here, which is part of the same fold structure, but is for the hinge line on the boundary between unit B and C, B and C. So this closure here is this one here. Okay, so we can find the hinge line there, and actually we can find it again in the next valley over, and over again here. So there is a hinge line running through for this particular closure. Part of the same fold, part of the same fold structure, but for a different layer. So we can trace hinge lines through the map like this. Next up, let's track out on the cross section where the axial trace or axial surface of the fold goes. So it connects the two hinge lines here, and as I've drawn it here, we continue like this and go through that point there. So that is the axial surface that connects the hinge line separating this limb from this limb of the antiform. Well, let's take this and use this information to trace out the axial surface on the map. Well, we'll do this in bits. So let's just join up the two hinge lines here, or the two hinge points, and that's our axial surface that is essentially this piece here on our cross section. And of course, we can trace it for a little bit on this side of the valley, which is the mirror image to this side that we sketched. So the axial surface is going to go like this. Well, actually, it's going to come down and into the valley and around. This axial surface, or the axial trace, can only cross the geological boundary at a hinge point. In the same way as on our cross section, the axial trace only crosses the geological boundary at hinge points. Otherwise, it's contained within a unit. So that means that our axial trace has to go and has to pass through these points here. So let's just draw those on. It's going to come down like this. And then around something like that. So that's our axial trace here. And we can do more than that, we can trace it over here. It has to also pass through this point, so it's going to run through like this. And on out. Oops, like that. So that is the axial trace, the axial surface of this antiform. Notice that the trace I've drawn is quite wiggly, because this is a planar surface inclined like this and therefore it interacts with the topography to create the axial trace. It V's into this valley, back out again around this ridge, V's into this valley and up and around again. So the axial trace shows this curvy shape. And of course, 
we could now draw structured contours on the axial trace to define the geometry of the axial surface in three dimensions, finding its strike and dip. We can do the same on this fold structure here, the sin form that lies out to the west of the antiform that we've already looked at, which comes through here. So again, we can find here the hinge point where the hinge line for this fold structure goes in, and it's here, and on the other side of the valley there. So we've got a fold hinge line that runs through here, and this time I'll just annotate it to show the sin form axis like that. And there's going to be another one here, which goes through this point, this point, something like that, across here. That's the hinge line for this part of the fold structure. So again, we've got a fold axial surface running down here that's the sin form. And that's going to come through here somewhere. More upright in this position, so our hinge lines are stacking sort of on top of each other. But we can see on our cross section, we've got another fold here as well, another sin form that lies this time to the southeast of the antiform that we started on. And in the uh, area of the cross section, the closure of the fold is entirely picked out by unit C, the lighter blue unit. But there's clearly a fold structure on here that comes through this ground like this, that's a, another sin form. Well, there's no hinge line that we can pick on the profile, it's buried in the subsurface, but the axial trace will lie in this ground in here. In other words, just to the side of the uh, unit B, which is where we're getting into the next limb. So the axial trace for this is going to come down through here, never crossing, never crossing a boundary because there's no hinge point contained entirely in the plane of the map within unit C. So that's the trace of the fold structure that's a sin form that lies on the southeast side. So we've got three folds, a sin form, an antiform, and another sin form. On the cross section, sin form, antiform, the other sin form. So that's a quick analysis of fold structures on a geological map.